What's going on YouTube? Today we're gonna to be talking about the all new Tesla Roadster. I know this is a much requested video and I'm finally making it. As part of a thank you for 500 subscribers, I'm making this a three part special. So hopefully these videos will provide you a ton of detail on all of the specs on the new Roadster and some information that you maybe haven't seen elsewhere. In this first video, we're gonna focus on range, weight, technical aspects like the 4680 cells structural pack, a lot of details of the car. We're gonna see if those 2017 specs like the 200 kilowatt hour battery pack still hold up. Let's dig in. So Tesla originally announced the Roadster in 2017 and it was supposed to come out in 2020, but with a ton of delays and some production issues, the Roadster has been pushed off to 2023. That's the latest update. So what we know about the specs from 2017, it'll have a 620 mile range, a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack, top speed of 250 plus miles an hour, zero to 60 in 1.9 seconds, quarter mile in 8.8 .8 seconds. But since 2017, Tesla's made some improvements in their battery technology with the Model S Plaid weight has come down dramatically and we're seeing the range effects because the Plaid has almost a 400 mile range with a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. So the first thing I wanna do is figure out how do we calculate range based on the actual parameters of the car? If we know the weight of the car, the coefficient of drag in the frontal area, let's make a formula to calculate how much range this car should have. So there's two forces that act on a car whenever it's driving, it's air resistance and rolling resistance. You can see the formulas on your screen there. I don't wanna go into them in too much depth. You can find more information about this online. So I'm gonna assume you already have some base knowledge or you can just follow the math along and trust the numbers. What we're gonna do is calculate how much power is required to drive this model. Model S Plaid at a constant 60 miles an hour. So if we plug in the numbers, we see that it takes 5.784 kilowatts to overcome air resistance and 8.522 kilowatts to overcome rolling resistance. That means we need 14.31 kilowatts total power to overcome 60 miles an hour of forces. If you extrapolate that a little further, you can see that based on the pack size of the Model S at 99.8 kilowatt hours, we could drive for 6.97 hours at a constant 60 miles an hour, and that would yield us about a 418 mile range. But because these cars aren't perfectly efficient, I'm estimating about a 90% powertrain efficiency that'll actually bring down that total 418 to 376 miles. The EPA rates the Plaid at 348 miles with the 21 inch wheels and 396 with the 19 inch wheels. The formula I've showed on the screen here using air resistance and rolling resistance is not perfect. There's a lot of factors that involve the wheels and tires. So this is just a general formula that could use as a big rule of thumb. It won't give you a perfect estimate. It'll just give you a ballpark number. So let's put the formula to the test. I've applied it to the Plaid like I just did in the last example. I've applied it to the Model 3 long range and I've applied it to the Model Y. And you can see the results here. In the Model 3, we see that using our method, we get a 323 mile projected range, which is right in between the EPA estimate for the performance and the long range. And then for the Model Y, we see a calculated range of 286 miles. This comes in a little bit lower than the EPA range. So you can see, like I was mentioning earlier, it's not perfect, but it's a really good approximation. So if we know how to calculate the projected range, we want to figure out how much battery pack does that Roadster really need to hit its 600 mile target. But before we jump to the Roadster, let's see if we actually put a bigger battery in the current Model S Plaid and let's see how that would affect range. So what I did is I took the specific energy of the battery pack and that's 186 watt hours per kilogram. I found this on the EPA's website and I basically multiplied that by new battery pack size. You can see the math on the screen here, but for all those different battery pack sizes, we've calculated weights. So for the 200 kilowatt hour battery pack, we're basically multiplying the current pack by two. In real life, this might not scale quite like that. It might scale a little better. So for example, if we had a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack, it might not weigh literally two X of a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. We might be able to save weight in places, but just to be safe and have a very conservative number, I've just multiplied by two. So a Model S Plaid with a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack is gonna weigh almost 6,000 pounds, 5,946. And using the formula from earlier where we use rolling resistance and air resistance at 60 miles an hour, we get 18.25 kilowatts of needed power at 60 miles an hour, which brings the total range to 658 miles. So if Tesla just doubled their current 100 kilowatt hour pack and threw it in the Plaid, 
it would actually see a 650 plus mile range and the EPA would probably rate this over 700 miles with the aero wheels. From Tesla's battery day, we learned two really cool things that are gonna happen to future models. One is the 4680 cells and two is the structural battery pack. First, let's talk about the 4680 cells. So Tesla quoted a plus 16% range increase from the new cells alone. Let's dive into that a little bit and break it down. So the current cells that are in the Model S Plaid, the 18650 cells, have a cell density of about 260 watt hours per kilogram. Pulling Tesla's numbers straight from the EPA website, we know that the pack density is about 186 watt hours per kilogram, and that's because there's a ton of components that go into the pack that are not the cells themselves. So you could think about this as the actual cells making up 71% of the mass of the pack. The 4680 cells, on the other hand, are much more energy dense. So there's a great video by the YouTube channel, The Limiting Factor, and he goes into a deep dive on the 4680 cells. And so he comes up with a cell density of 300 watt hours per kilogram, and that's what I'm gonna be using in this video. If you apply the same 71% rule where you're saying that 71% of the pack weight is cells, we see that the total pack density with 4680 cells would be around 215 watt hours per kilogram. So that's the number we're gonna use for our calculations. For the structural pack, we're gonna get into it a little bit later in the video, but I will say during Tesla's battery day, they said that it'll result in a 14% range increase. If you don't know what a structural pack is conceptually, I'm gonna link a great video by The Limiting Factor. He goes into detail and tries to explain what the structural pack is. If you don't wanna click through and check out that video, a really, really simple way to understand it or conceptualize it is basically ripping out chassis weight. So you could think of it as literally cutting out of the floor. This is absolutely not what happens, but it's just a way to think about it. Cutting out the floor of a chassis and replacing it with pack and battery cells. So those cells will actually start taking torsional load of the car. And instead of having just steel or some sort of metal that's there in the floor it's literally the battery pack so the battery pack is actually going to replace part of the chassis and start taking load that the chassis would normally take keep in mind there's a ton of details about the structural pack that i personally don't know and that a lot of people don't know there's whole videos dedicated to just this subject so i'm just going to pull the figures out from it and if you want to go down that rabbit hole please do because it's really interesting so let's talk about the weight of the roadster back in 2017 we didn't get any concrete numbers from the announcement so we're going to have to to make an educated guess here. I've taken two benchmark cars that'll help us make a good guess. One is the Remock Nevera, the fastest EV in the world, and the second is the Model S Plaid, which we've already looked at. The Remock Nevera has a curb weight of 4,740 pounds and it has a 120 kilowatt hour battery pack. We don't know the specific energy of the battery pack, but we're going to estimate it as equivalent to the Plaid. So that would make the battery pack about 645 kilograms, bringing the total weight of the car without the pack to 3,317 pounds. Again, this is just an estimate. I've been through the Plaid numbers before, but the Plaid without a battery pack weighs 3,578 pounds. So what's the Roadster gonna weigh without a battery pack? This is definitely a subjective answer, but I'm trying to use as much information as we possibly know. So you might have some different opinions and I'd love to hear them in the comments below. The number I've arrived at is 3,200 pounds and this is my reasoning. So the Model S is obviously a big family sedan. The Roadster is gonna be two doors with an extra two seats in the back. The Roadster should be smaller dimensions wise, maybe a little bit less length and a little bit less height, probably similar width to the Plaid. They should be using more lightweight materials and the actual chassis of the car should be improved. I know there's a ton of details here that I'm just totally scraping over, but this 3,200 I think is a nice ballpark number. It's about 117 pounds less than the Remock Nevera and 378 pounds less than a Model S Plaid. It might be a little bit optimistic, but again, we don't have concrete numbers, so this is the best we have for now. Let me know down below what you think of this estimate and let's keep going. So if you remember back to the first part of the video where we walked through a hypothetical range calculation on the existing Model S Plaid, and we came up with 376 miles, which is right between the EPA estimates for the two wheel versions. I've taken that equation and included battery capacity, specific energy of the battery pack, or you could call gravitational energy density, and actual mass of the vehicle without a battery pack. And so I came up with this formula, which actually predicts the range based on all these parameters. And so what we can do with that formula is apply our assumption so far, and then vary the battery capacity and see how much range we get. So our assumption so far, our coefficient of drag of 0.21, pretty much equivalent to a Model S Plaid, a frontal area of 2.1 meters squared, a little bit smaller than a current Model S, mass of 3,200 pounds, what we just talked about, 
a specific energy of 215 watt hours per kilogram. We talked about that when we talked about the new 4680 cells and the battery capacity we're gonna vary. So let's start with 100 kilowatt hours. Imagine this new Roadster with 4680 cells and it's pretty lightweight. We have a 3,200 pound curb weight without a battery. We're gonna put a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack into this thing and we're gonna calculate how much range it has. So I put all the math on the screen with the formula we're using and we see that it comes out with a 423 mile range. And maybe with arrow wheels, this could be bumped up to 450, 460, but that's really solid for just a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. So what we can actually do is take that function I just showed you and graph it. So on the X axis will be our battery pack size and on the Y axis will be our range. So you could input any battery pack size into this function and get a hypothetical range out. Again, if you remember back in the beginning of this video, this isn't a perfect method. It's just a good ballpark estimation, but you can see the numbers on your screen there. If we go all the way up to a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack, that's gonna give us almost 750 miles of range. So that 600 mile range crossover mark, which I've highlighted on the graph, happens at about 150 kilowatt hours of pack size. All the numbers I just showed you are actually completely disregarding the gains from the structural pack. All of those calculations are based on that new Roadster with a 3,200 pound weight without a pack, and then throwing in that new energy dense pack with the 4680 cells. Now let's include the structural pack into our calculations and see how that improves things. We know from battery day that the structural pack will decrease overall vehicle mass by about 10%. If we incorporate that into our calculation, we can see it has huge improvements even versus just the 4680 cell improvement. So I have graphed on the screen two lines. Blue is 4680 cell improvement with the structural pack improvement. Black is just the 4680 cell improvement. So you can see the 600 mile range mark comes in at 140 kilowatt hours roughly. And at 200 kilowatt hours, this thing would have close to an 800 mile range. Let's summarize everything we've talked about so far. So coefficient of drag, which we didn't talk about a lot, we're using 0.21, which is the same value as the current Model S. It's really hard to increase this number further. It's pretty damn optimized. For frontal area, we're gonna decrease it by 10%. So we're taking that from lowering the actual height of the Roadster. It should be about 10% less than the current Model S. We talked a lot about battery capacity, so it's gonna be somewhere in the ballpark of 140 to 160 kilowatt hours if it does indeed need to reach that 600 mile range threshold. However, there have been resource shortages and supply chain issues, so Tesla could decide to just screw the 600 mile requirement and bring down the actual pack size to maybe like 100 or 120. Using the 150 kilowatt hours as a nice middle ground, the pack weight comes out to 698 kilograms, which is 1,540 pounds. If we incorporate that into our 3,200 pound base weight, we get a curb weight of 4,418 pounds total. It's actually pretty light considering a 120 kilowatt hour Remock Nevera that exists today weighs about 4,700 pounds or 300 pounds more than this. And finally, using the methods I described earlier in the video, our calculated range comes out to 632 miles. That would probably equate to close to a 700 mile EPA rating with the appropriate wheels and tires. I hope you enjoyed the video. In the next part, we're gonna talk about all things powertrain, so torque curves, RPMs, gearing. We're gonna deep dive into the Plaid powertrain and give you all the specifics. And then we're gonna translate that to performance metrics. So we'll talk about zero to 60, quarter mile, 6130, top speed. Stay tuned and I'll see you guys next time.